finally, what uh, Biocon has been waiting for, the big approval for uh, Pegfilgrastim has come in. Uh, overnight, the US FDA has approved uh, Pegfilgrastim. It's a drug that was jointly developed by Biocon and Myelin. Uh, to take us through the important development and what happens next, uh, we are joined by Kiran Mazumdar Shaw of Biocon. Good morning, Ms. Shaw. Uh, thank you so much for speaking to Bloomberg Quint. First of all, congratulations on your big achievement. But uh, uh, we know what exactly has happened. What's the way ahead? Uh, what will happen next? What's the launch pipeline? And what's the launch uh, timeline that we have uh, for Pegfil Grastim now? Well, uh, Pegfil Grastim has uh, an imminent opportunity to get into the marketplace. And I think this is a huge milestone again for Biocon, as you very rightly put it, because uh, this is now the second biosimilar that has uh, uh, got approval from uh, US FDA. And as you know, that in both cases, we are the first biosimilar in its uh, category to be approved. So it was first biosimilar Trastuzumab and now the biosimilar Nulasta. And as you know, many companies who have actually been working on the similar molecules have still not crossed the finishing line. So it tells you how complex these drugs are to develop, and it also reflects the competence and capabilities that we have at Biocon. Ma'am, what's the expected timeline for launch? Mylin has said that it will happen in the coming weeks. Uh, what's the view at your end? Yeah, so I think, you know, as we said, it is imminent and, you know, we will be prepared for imminent launch and we will be getting ready for uh, how soon we can get it into the market. Okay, uh, it's a big drug, uh, $4.2 billion, according to the statement that was released by you. Uh, how much market share uh, can you expect to garner in the first year and what's your assumption of a price erosion? I don't think I... Uh, would like to basically make such comments because I defer to Mylan, who is really uh, front-ending the commercialization. But suffice to say that between that Mylan will try and garner uh, as much market share as they possibly can, because we do have a first mover advantage, and we will try and make uh, you know the, uh, the the best of it. Okay. Any any details of uh, how much uh, price erosion assumption are you considering? Not at this point in time. I do not want to comment on that. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, in terms of uh, ramp up uh, of this drug, how will that be? Uh, will it be gradual? What's the strategy there? I think, you know, all these questions are something you should ask Mylan because I think they are the commercial front end for this product and it's not right for me to comment. Okay, uh, so I I'll ask something that is more pertinent to Biocon at this point of time. Uh, can you give us uh, the financial agreement that is there between you and Mylan for this drug? How much uh, percent of the revenues or how much percent of the profits that uh, you will be getting and what kind of margins you will be making on this drug? As you know, from a revenue point of view, uh, it is going to be Mylan will really book the top line revenues. Biocon will basically be getting a profit share. And the only revenues we can book is the supply of product to Mylan. Uh, any idea on what EBITDA margins will be you be working on this drug? Well, obviously, you can imagine that these EBITDAs are very attractive and very lucrative. And that is why we've been investing so much in uh, biosimilars, because we believe that these are very attractive drugs to uh, develop and, you know, Certainly for the foreseeable future, I think uh, biosimilars will see very low levels of competition. And therefore, we believe that we will be able to have very rich EBITDAs. Okay. Uh, does, does this, you know, allay any concerns on the Bangalore facility? Because a lot of questions were asked when you, get, uh, you, when you got seven observations there. Uh, does this allay in anyone who's having any concern uh, on the working of the Bangalore facility? Well, first and foremost, I think, uh, you know, people who comment on 483s need to understand what these 483s are about. If you looked at the comments made by people who understand the 483 significance, clearly said that these were just not significant and these were not material and that these were more in the nature of uh, continuous improvement. 
And the fact that we've got approval means that the audit was found satisfactory. Okay. Uh, are you prepared capacity-wise uh, from the Bangalore plant to supply whatever myelin needs uh, uh, in this drug? So we are going to continuously uh, make sure that we put in capacity to uh, support every one of our biosimilar needs. Okay. Uh, another important question, and you spoke about this is the second approval that you've got. The first one was uh, Trastuzumab. Uh, I think the street wants uh, to know from you what kind of you know EU approval timeline can we expect for uh, Trastuzumab? Now that is something I really uh, can't uh, you know give you any optics on. We've gone through an inspection, and we're hoping that EU will give us an early approval. Uh, some you know, but but it's it, it's something that we really won't know much about till we really get optics on uh, how they're looking and reviewing our dossiers. Okay. Uh, and my, my final question, Ms. Shaw, and, and this uh, actually came in in one of the international uh, uh, dailies yesterday overnight and just wanted your comment. Uh, I don't know how authentic this is, but it says that FDA rejects myelin and biocons follow on insulin glargines, glargines referencing Langtus. Uh, can you care to comment what this is regarding? No, this is basically talking about a complete response letter that we received because, as you know, we had a 30-month hold. And uh, as a part of that, we decided to uh, include our Malaysia facility. And we had a discussion with FDA, and it was very clear that a CMC bridge was not going to suffice and that they would need a clinical bridge. And therefore, we decided as a part of this 30-month hold that it was in our best interest to actually, uh, you know, uh, anticipate a CRL, but do a clinical bridge so that we have the right capacities with which to address the market. So this is something that we anticipated. It's not that it's been rejected in an outright manner. It is something that we are... Uh, we have anticipated and proactively working on to make sure that all our facilities are approved by US FDA, um, you know, ahead of the 30-month, uh, you know, approval timelines that we are looking at. Okay, Ms. Shaw, we leave it at that. Uh, thanks so much for speaking to Bloomberg Quint. And once again, congratulations on the big achievement. Thank you. Well, uh, not too much of the details diverted, divulged, but Darshan uh, tried his best to try and get almost all necessary points coming in uh, from Kiran Mazumdar Shah. The stock of Biocon has cooled off completely after starting off the pre-open session in a very positive way.